Before we move to the next topic, uh, let me say a few more words on this dynamic programming. Yeah. We can treat uh, this topic as a simple introduction to dynamic programming. First, dynamic, you know, uh, the data keep changing. Yeah, the data keep changing. Yeah, dynamic. Yeah. This programming, yeah, the meaning of this programming is different from our usual programming. Okay, so your the coding, your write code, computer code, it's different. Yeah, so the programming here is. <clears throat> uh, means use a table to organize data. Okay. Programming related to this table thing. <laughs> yeah. So dynamic programming. Yeah. So you you use a table to, you know, store your current data, store your dynamic data. Yeah, that's the programming. Yeah, and this table is the same thing as our dictionary. Just another name of that dictionary. Okay, so now you you know the you know connection. Yeah, all these different names. But the same thing, same concept. Yeah, dynamic programming. Yeah. So it, it's a you know important topic. Yeah. All right. In order to describe the main idea of dynamic programming, uh, I just want to use uh, two main words to describe its main property. Yeah. One property is recursion. Another property is that table. Table or dictionary, the same thing. So first, you, you need to discover a recursive formula. Second, you need to store your data in a table in a dictionary so that you do not use redundant computation. Yeah. That's the main idea of dynamic program. Okay, yeah. All right, yeah. so let's move to the next topic. All right. Yeah, so the essence here. Yeah, no repeat it. Yeah. All right, we talk about that. Yeah. All right, so the method two, now I give you the details implementation. Yeah. Pretty simple, yeah. dynamic programming way. Yeah. All right, the code here, suppose you have an array, the array name is called a known, known F array, known F array, okay, yeah. How to see, the Fibonacci number you want to calculate already there. This is the condition. Yeah. This means the the value available already available. Do not. Do the repeated redundant calculation. You just return the known value. That simple. Okay. Yeah. But otherwise, otherwise, that means known f of i equals zero. The value is unknown. The value is unknown. You get here. Unknown. You get here. You need to do the calculation yeah. and after you get this calculation you need to do assignment before you return the value you need to do assignment 
Okay? And in this assignment, you only do once. Now, the next time, you just return the known value. Okay. So this is the simple way. How do we use the table? Yeah. How do we use the dictionary? Now here it's an array. The, the table not necessary. So here, when you talk about table, dictionary, it, it is just a storage structure. You treat it as a storage structure. Then we can treat array as a table, array as a dictionary. Yeah. So in this case, array is used as table or dictionary. Okay, yeah, all right. Just a simple version of table or dictionary. Yeah. Because for some relatively more complicated questions, you may need a 2D array, yeah, 2D array. So 2D table, 2D array, that it, it looks like a table, right? Yeah. Table usually we mean 2D, right? 2D data. Yeah. But 1D array, you can treat it as a sim simple version table. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Let's move to the next topic related to Fibonacci numbers. C.2, golden ratio. Yeah. Golden ratio. Yeah. This special number, golden ratio, some of you may know that golden ratio. Yeah. So first we need to spend some time to learn this golden ratio concept. All right. Yeah. Uh, some people, they have some interesting story about the golden ratio. Yeah. When you draw paintings, yeah, how to draw human figures in a beautiful way, natural, normal way. Yeah. So those people uh, found uh, based on the golden ratio. Yeah. So when you have chance to, you know, uh, take different portions, how to scale different parts, you know, using the, here actually, in this uh, figure, uh, in this picture, uh, it tells you about the Fibonacci numbers. So here it's not a golden ratio. Yeah. So in this figure, it's a Fibonacci number. Yeah. So we put a Fibonacci, consecutive Fibonacci numbers in this way. Okay. Zero, we skip. Then one, yeah, because if we apply the formula next, one, one, two, three, five, eight consecutive Fibonacci numbers. Then we can put them in this way because you have two ones, okay? After that, the next one, two, you can draw a square with a size two that can be aligned with the previous two smaller squares in the perfect way, right? Then you add a three back, you get a rectangle, um, another perfect way, okay? You'll keep adding square of the next, with the size of next Fibonacci number, you can form a new rectangle. Yeah, keep growing that rectangle. Yeah. So you can see uh, all, all these squares can be put together in the natural, beautiful way. And that natural beautiful way can also connect to, so one way is you can draw this uh, beautiful uh, spiral curve. Another is this, you know, painting uh, some uh, beautiful painting. Yeah. yeah. So that lot of stories related to the Fibonacci numbers and also uh, golden ratio. For the golden ratio, yeah. the definition of the golden ratio from this picture, so you can see, yeah, 
Yeah. Here, let me use, uh, you know, diagram to represent this golden ratio. Yeah. We have two line segments, smaller one, lo longer, uh, shorter one, longer one. A represent a longer line segment, B shorter line segment. Put them together so you get a A plus B line segment. Yeah. But some people, so they feel there is some beautiful way to connect these line segments in this way that they feel. Yeah. That's the natural, beautiful way. First, you look at the ratio A over B. A longer line segment, B shorter one. That ratio should be equal to A plus B over A. Yeah. So those ancient people, those ancient people argue. So this is the most beautiful ratio, the most natural way, ratio that they feel. Yeah. All right. So let's take a look. What is this ratio? Yeah. All right. First, we can do simplification a little bit. Yeah. So we have this one plus B over A. Yeah. We want to find the ratio A over B, but this ratio can be written as one plus its reciprocal, the reciprocal of the original ratio. Okay. Yeah. To find it, yeah, we want to introduce a new variable to represent this ratio, x. Yeah. Because in, if we in, use a new variable, x, we can avoid two variables, two different symbols, a and b, two different symbols. Now we only need to use one variable, x. Then our equation we can convert the ratio relationship into one equation. X equals one plus one over X. Yeah. So we simplify the original equation. And this time we only have one variable. And we know we can solve this equation for X. Yeah. If two variables some people may not feel, you know, you can find the values of two variables, right? One equation. Using one equation, how can you solve equation with two variables? Right? Yeah. So we replace the ratio with a new variable. We don't have two variables anymore. We only have one ratio variable. So we can find its value from this simplified equation. Yeah. So next, we can convert it to an equivalent quadratic equation. X squared equals X plus one. Equivalent, yeah. after we remove the common denominator, equivalent, and in this new quadratic equation, we can solve it easily. Just apply some formula, quadratic formula, okay, yeah. So the quadratic formula is used on this uh, general standard quadratic equation. A cannot be zero, okay, yeah. So then this is the formula, yeah. So here we can plug in our ABC coefficients yeah. in this equation, yeah, standard form for the quadratic equation, yeah. A equals one, B negative one, C negative one. Yeah. After we plug in, we get uh, two possible solutions for X. One plus minus root five over two. Yeah. Two possible solutions. Yeah. But uh, if we want to go back to our original problem, the definition, what is the definition of X? That's the ratio of two line segment. Yeah. 
the meaning of x meaning of x yeah. ratio well sorry ratio yeah of two line segments okay two line segments that ratio should be positive right that ratio should be positive x should be positive if it's positive then the negative solution does not make sense right the negative negative value for this equation it cannot be used as the ratio of two line segments that means we should drop the negative solution all right. After we drop the negative solution, we only keep the positive solution because one is less than root five. Okay. So one minus root five, it's a negative number. That negative solution cannot be used as the value of X here. Yeah. So we only keep the positive value. One plus root five the whole th number over two. Yeah. And this number we call the golden ratio. This number approximately equal to 1.61a. And if you want to calculate more digits, you can have infinite many digits. Yeah. And uh, it's an irrational number, not a rational number, irrational. Irrational number. Yeah, because the digits can go forever and without any cycle. Yeah. Some number with infinite many digits, but you may find the repeated cycles, certain cycle repeated infinite many times. Those numbers are rational numbers. If we can find those, those cycles. Yeah. But for irrational number, you can never find any cycle, any repeated cycle. There is no cycle pattern repeated in the, you know, all the digits after the decimal point. Yeah. All right. So the golden ratio is such an irrational number. Another way for rational number, for rational number, you can represent it as, as a fraction, ratio of two integers, now, m over m, yep. m and both integers. Yeah. Those numbers, we call it rational numbers. Yeah. And this one cannot be represented as a fraction of two integers. Yeah. So you can prove. Yeah. It's not hard. People can prove. So you cannot. Yeah, actually, you only need to prove root 5 cannot be represented as any rational numbers yeah. use contrapositive method okay yeah all right all right so here the golden ratio we derive it uh, why we derive it later you will see in order to write the formula for the fibonacci numbers we need to use golden ratio we need to use this golden ratio something like magic of this golden ratio okay all right yeah so the golden ratio people like to use a special greek letter phi to represent the golden ratio yeah remember we use a greek uh greek alphabet pi to represent you know the famous constant used in circle yeah but here, similar situation, 
but we use this fee special notation, this fee to represent the golden ratio. All right, yeah. Then, if we go back to the some formula I explained before, remember I talk about if we do, do not remove the redundant computation, we will get a big theta of a to the n. That n is the golden ratio. Now I can write this phi to the n. With the redundancy, yeah, so if you do the recursion version without removing the redundancy, you get an algorithm in this category. Big theta of phi to the n. That's low. Yeah. It's greater than one. Yeah, actually 1.6 something. Yeah. Much greater than one, right? Yeah. Yeah. See? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Next, we need to see how do we use the golden ratio to write the formula of Fibonacci numbers? All right, yeah. magic formula. Yeah. First, I give you the formula first. Yeah. And uh, from, from it, you can see the power of math. Yeah. Yeah, why? First, the complete formula is look like this. F sub n yeah, equals one over root five. It's a irrational number, right? Root five, irrational number. 1 over root 5, another irrational number. Then it multiply big parentheses. Inside the big parentheses, the first term, phi to the n, phi is an irrational number. Phi to the n, also another irrational number. Okay. Then the second term, minus negative 1 to the nth over phi to the n, another irrational number. So here you can see after this many operations on irrational number, finally we get an integer. So this is an integer. Fibonacci number must be an integer. The final answer of this formula, it must be an integer. And it is the Fibonacci num number. So here, it's not easy to see that. How can you connect Fibonacci numbers and the golden ratio in this way? Yeah, so it looks like magic, right? How people can discover this kind of formula? Because there is no way you can guess a formula like this. Can you imagine someone can guess a formula like this? Nobody can do that. Okay? Yeah. Nobody, you know, when you see a sequence of Fibonacci numbers, can you make this kind of guess? You cannot. Okay? Yeah. All right. Yeah. We will see how to find this formula. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, we may, yeah, actually we may, we may do in two steps. The first step we verify this formula. How about that? So, it, so it's not discovery the formula. We verify. We assume yeah, because we already have this formula. We just verify it is correct. That's much easier than discovering the formula, right? Discovery, you need to find the you know, right way to calculate its expression. That's hard. But to verify it, because we already know its specific form, so we can apply some other different ways to do the verification. Yeah. All right. So let let's look at how do we how do we do the verification first, then the discovery. All right. Yeah. Okay, yeah. All right. So 
Question, how can you connect? Yeah, so here, yeah, because it's a long story. Yeah, it's a long story. Yeah. But let's do the verification part first. Verify Fibonacci number. Let's only do special cases. Then general case. Special case first, then the general case. Okay, yeah, all right. All right, the special case. We star, yeah, because this formula is given. What do we need to do? Just to verify when we plug in n equals zero, one, two, three, and so on. This formula always gives us the correct answer. That's what we need to do here. Okay, yeah. All right. So for the verification, first, plug in zero, n equals zero, F zero. Yeah. So you can see inside the parenthesis, phi to the zero, that's one, okay? One over one, also one, so one minus one, zero. So it's correct, yeah. So we verified first simple case. The second, n equals one, let's plug in, but this time we need to do some computation here, yeah. The first fee, one plus root five over two, the second one plus reciprocal of the first one. So two over one plus root five, reciprocal, yeah. But for the second one, its denominator is relatively complicated. So we want to make the denominator as simple as possible. Yeah. So there is a technique, you know, a rational, rationalize the denominator, that technique. So we multiply conjugate. Yeah. Usually we multiply, you know, fraction, uh, let's say, root five minus one over root five minus one, okay? Yeah, that's one, that's one. But this root five minus one, we treat as a conjugate of root five plus one, okay? Yeah, in that way, we know we can apply the formula. A plus B times A minus B equals A squared minus B squared, okay? Yeah. So root five as a, b as one, yeah. root five minus one times root five plus one. So a squared, that's five, minus b squared, that's one. So four, four, you cancel out the numerator two, so you get a denominator two. Yeah. Then root five minus one, okay, yeah. Then this time you have common denominator so you can add up two numerators after cancellation. Yeah, you know, negative one, one cancel out. So you have two root five, two and this denominator two cancel out, root five and this root five cancel out. So you get one. Yeah. yeah. So you, that's the same as our F sub one, okay? So we verify the second case, all right. The third case, yeah. actually for a rigorous proof, the first two verification already enough, okay? Yeah, already enough. We do not need to verify the third case and so on. Yeah. But here I like to do some practice. Yeah, let's do, some practice on the Fibonacci, uh, on the golden ratios. Yeah. I tried to, you know, show you some basic algebra manipulation techniques yeah. when we manipulate golden ratios. All right. When n equals two, this time we want to verify if this number gives us F two. But if we calculate directly, so you can see this time, 
our computation is a little harder because we need to take square. We need to take square, so we may need to use the formula a plus b square formula, right? Equals a square plus 2ab plus b square. Yeah. Or uh, also a minus b square. Let me need to use these two formulas. Then after expansion, we get this. And then after some cancellation, we also get a one. That's the same as our F2 Fibonacci number, one. Yeah. So the first three cases, verification. Okay, yeah. All right. Next. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So if we want to practice another time, still practice, but this time, I want to show you a different way. Yeah. Because if we do this way again and again, the computation becomes more and more complicated. Now, here we want to find a better way. Now, because the you know computation calculation related to root five, you know, it could be very messy, right? Could be very messy. So we want to find, uh, you know, some convenient or some <clears throat> some way avoid avoid root five manipulations. Yeah. So let's see how to do the verification without using the root five related operations. Yeah. Here I can show you another interesting way. Yeah. All right. So let's do our last special case verification here, but we use a different way. Yeah. So this time phi to the third plus one over phi q. Okay. Yeah. This verification. But I do not want to plug in golden ratio number directly here because that computation could be too complicated. Okay, too complicated. I want to avoid. Yeah. So what, what is the better way here? Phi cube, we feel that degree is too high. That degree make our computation too hard. So we want to bring down that degree number. We want to apply the properties of golden ratio phi to bring down that degree number. Then our computation could be easier. Okay, yeah. So how to do that? So in order to reduce the degree of phi cube, our phi is a special number. Our phi is it's not a sim, uh, ordinary symbol in algebra. It's a special number, golden ratio number. That means this number has some special properties. So we can use those properties. Yeah. All right, so what are, the, are those properties? Yeah. If we look, look at the original equation, we can see we have these two properties. Yeah. Can you see these two properties? One equals phi squared minus phi. The second one, phi squared equals phi plus one. The second one can be derived from the first one, right? From the first equality, if you move that negative phi term to the left-hand side and switch two sides, you get a second one, okay? Yeah. So you only need to show the first one. To show the first one, let's see how do we get a phi? Phi is a root of this quadratic equation, right? So 
the original equation we derive, we find this golden ratio number. That's this quadratic equation. That means if we plug in phi into this equation, the equation holds, right? That means phi squared minus phi minus one equals zero. Okay. From this expression, can you get our first property directly? We just move negative one to the right-hand side and switch two sides. You get our first property. One equals phi squared minus phi. Okay, yeah. All right. Then in our algebra calculation, we can use either the first property or the second property, we can make our calculation easier. We can reduce the degree of phi cube. Yeah, so let me show you. So now we're ready to do the simplification. All right, so let's look at the phi cube. When we write a phi cube, can we write it as phi times phi square? Hey, yeah, we split. Why we want to split in this way? Because after you isolate phi square, can you apply the second property? Replace phi square by phi plus one. Yeah, all right, so phi times parenthesis phi plus one. Yeah. Then you get a phi square plus phi. Here, look, at you have another phi square. Can you replace this phi square by another phi plus one? Yeah, so you get a two phi plus one. In this way, you bring down the degree phi cube, right? So this, after this change, the exponent of phi becomes one. It is much lower than three in phi cube. The lower, the easier, right? In calculation. Yeah. All right, so let's put it here. Yeah. Uh, and we try to simplify one over phi cube this time. This time phi cube is at a denominator not the numerator. So then it's harder. We need to do some work on the denominator. Okay, yeah, all right. But we, we can use these two properties to do the simplification. Okay, yeah, all right. First, you see the numerator equals one. Numerator equals one, but you have a property, write one as phi squared minus phi. Yeah. Can you replace one by phi squared minus phi? Yeah. But when you do this replacement, actually you make the numerator more complicated, right? Yeah. Some people, may not be willing to do that because they feel you you didn't simplify it. You, you make your formula more complicated. That's okay. Although we make it more complicated, but after this replacement, you can see the numerator and the denominator, they have common factor phi. And uh, we can do cancellation common factor phi, we can do cancellation, okay? Yeah, we want, we want that cancellation. Yeah, all right. After cancellation, the numerator becomes phi minus one and the denominator equals phi squared. Yeah. The degree of the denominator is lower than before. That's a good sign, right? The degree of the denominator is lower than before. It's a good sign. Okay. All right. Next, 
we we have another one here, right? When you see one, can you apply the first property of golden ratio another time? Replace one by another round, phi square minus phi. Okay, let's do that again. After replacement, we do some simplification and we see we can do another round cancellation, common factor cancellation on phi. Another round. All right, yeah. So after cancellation, we have that two over phi minus one. Two over phi minus one. Okay, yeah. Although if you like, two equals two times one, you can do another replacement. Okay, yeah. That would work. If you do that way, that would work. Yeah, but here, let me just... Uh, do the combination directly from this expression. Yeah. All right. Now I want to calculate phi cube plus one over phi cube. Yeah. And using the these two expressions, one negative one cancel out. Okay. Two common factor we can take it out, factor it out. Inside the parentheses, we have phi plus one over phi, but that phi plus one over phi is just a F1, right? Yeah, we know, yeah, that this gives us, although there is a root five, remember in order to get F3, we need to multiply one over root five. But this side, we also need to multiply one over root five, yeah. But after that, we get a phi three over, oh, phi three equals two F one. F three, F three equals two F one. That's two, that's two. So that's the same as our F three calculated from the recursion formula. Okay, so we, we verified in this case. Yeah, yeah, although in our, rigorous proof we do not need to do the extra verification for step three and four yeah here i just want to show you some you know special algebra techniques yeah. so you can use to simplify your computation yeah. using the properties of Fibonacci non, uh, not Fibonacci, properties of the golden ratio number. Okay, yeah. All right, so let's finish. Uh, yeah, here we finish this topic. Yeah. Next, yeah, next, special case. Yeah, very, yeah, powerful tool. Yeah, I mentioned that before, the powerful tool, mathematical induction mathematical induction in order to show the general case we need to apply mathematical induction okay yeah so let's review a little bit mathematical induction the standard steps check the best uh, base cases yeah we check it f0 s f1 yeah we did more than these two base cases we did four yeah all right Step two, induction assumption. Yeah. Assume that the formulas is true for two, for K in the range between two and M, it's true. That's our induction assumption. Yeah, yeah. You just make this assumption, okay? But K must fall in this range between two and M, this range, then, this formula is true. Yeah. Step three, you want to expand your range. Expand your range. You want to verify that when k equals n plus one, yeah, k e equals n plus one, that's out of the range in step two, right? n plus one, out of the range. But you want to show it's still true. This formula, yeah, 
when you replace k by n plus one, it is still true, but you need to prove it rigorously. Rigorously, you cannot assume. Step three, you cannot assume anymore. You can only prove it by the existing formulas. If you can do that, then it's correct. We prove it. Okay, all right. Next, yeah, let me show you the mathematical induction. Yeah. Although the tedious work, yeah, but let's just go through that process once. Yeah. All right. Formula transformation. Yeah. All right. Recurrence formula, this is given. So we have this formula, it's given. Yeah. All right. Then remember our remember our induction assumption. Induction assumption. Yeah. Based on our induction assumption, yeah, here. Induction assumption, we make assumption on this formula, but this formula is only true when k is in this range. It is true, only k in this range, we can apply induction assumption. Otherwise, we cannot apply. Out of this range, we cannot apply. Yeah, so we should be careful here. Yeah, all right. Because the first subscript n is in the range. Yeah. It's here, it's in the range. So we can apply formula for fn. Yeah, so. That's this one. Uh, then the second term, the subscript n minus one also in this range, right? Yeah, also here, n minus one, also in this range. That means our induction assum assumption also true, so we can apply it. Yeah, so it's correct. So we can write our fn minus one in this form based on our induction assumption okay all right now let's do the calculation yeah. let's do the simplification yeah. all right let's take the one over root five out and only look at the big parenthesis inside the parenthesis we have the power terms, phi to the n power and a phi to the n minus one power. Yeah. Two power terms, we put them together. And next, uh, you know, the power expressions are at a denominator because they have the similar structure. So the first two terms have the similar structure. The second terms also have the similar structures. So we want to put the terms with the similar structures together. Yeah. Yeah. Because in that way, they have common properties. Yeah. Common properties. Okay. Yeah. All right. So now this is after this grouping, after this grouping operation, yeah, then we compare it with our destination. This is our destination, right? Yeah. We want to show, show it's correct. So we want to compare if these two expressions are correct, right? If they, if they are correct, uh, if they are the same, if they are the same, then it's correct. So we verify it. Yeah. All right. To show these two expressions are the same, we can ignore the same constant, one over root five, right? We only need to compare the parts inside the parenthesis. Inside the parenthesis, okay? Yeah. Two different expressions inside the big parenthesis. We only need to do that kind of comparison, okay? Yeah. 
Then when we do comparisons, can we can we imagine in our mind the terms with the similar express with the similar structures should be the same. The terms with the power form, yeah, and to the uh, phi to the m plus one, the power form, and the terms in the power form, these two, we imagine they should be the same, right? Because they have the same structures. The parts with the similar structures, they should be the same. That's our, you know, imagination. We don't know it's correct or not. That's our imagination. Okay. Yeah. All right. Similarly, for the fractional part, we want to imagine, yeah, because they have the similar structures. So we reasonably re we imagine they should be the same. These terms with the same structure should be the same. Yeah. But we need to prove they are correct. We need to verify our imagination is correct. Okay, all right. Let's do the first one. The first one's simpler, so we can get the first one quickly. Yeah. For the first one, we start with the second property of the golden ratio. Phi squared equals phi plus one. We know phi has this property. Okay, yeah. Then can we multiply both sides by phi to the n minus one? both sides of equality, okay? Then, after simplification, we get our target. Phi to the n minus plus one. Phi to the n plus one equals phi to the m plus phi to the n minus one. That's our first target, okay? Yeah, simple, yeah. But second one, a little harder, yeah, the second one. We want to simplify it. Yeah. So let's do the second one. Okay. The second one, we want to verify this expression. Can we simplify it a little bit? Backward thinking. Yeah. yeah. Here. Yeah. Our target. This is our target. Okay. Yeah. Now we apply the backward thinking. In order to get this target, we go backward. Okay, the backward, we remove the common denominator going backward. Common denominator, you multiply both sides, phi to the n plus one, that's the common denominator, both sides. So we get this expression. Is it correct? It's still not easy to see if it's correct. Can we simplify it? by eliminating the negative one's power, negative one's power, you know, make this expression a little harder to understand. So we want to eliminate that negative one power. Okay, uh, how to eliminate, we multiply negative one to the n minus one. Then the left-hand side becomes one, the right-hand side, after simplification, you have phi squared minus phi. That's our first property of Fibonacci, uh, not Fibonacci, our first property of golden ratio. Okay, yeah, so this is the first property. That is our second property of golden ratio phi, okay? And we know this first property is correct, right? Then we go backward. Yeah, if this is correct, because then we can go backward, okay? All the way to our second target, all the way. Yeah. Because the arrows, two directional arrows. Yeah, so we can go two dire both directions. So we do backward, deductions, yeah, so we can get our second target, okay? After that, 
we prove it. So we prove when k, so we prove it. For k equals m plus one, the formula also two, that means we can expand the range. Yeah? Expand the range one number bigger. Every time we can expand the range one number bigger, right? Bigger, 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 and the bigger forever. And the, finally, our range can cover any positive integers because we can always expand one number bigger, right? Using our this formula transformation step, we can always expand the chain range one number bigger. That means finally, we will cover all the integer numbers for the Fibonacci formula. So we prove, oh, yeah, we prove through verification. This is a verification type proof. Okay, so we can show this formula is correct for all positive integer n. Okay, yeah, all right, okay. All right, yeah, but this is the verification proof. Uh, after that, we need to discover it. Yeah. Verification, we didn't discover it, right? Someone gave us the formula, we just do the verification. But you may ask this question. Someone needs to discover the formula, right? The question is how to discover the formula. Yeah, that's that's important, okay? Yeah. When you know nothing, when you do not have any information, you need to discover it, yeah. 